Now, let's talk about the energy balance for a constant pressure or constant, um, sorry, constant pressure expansion or compression process. Okay. Now, for this, we're going to have to say that Q is going into the system and work is coming out of the system. So if work is from the system, heat is going into the system. Okay. And we had this equation before. We just know that our difference in energy is going to be equal to our change in energy of our system. And what we can do then is we can write out this. So I have heat going in. I have work going out. Okay, that's my energy in and energy out. Those are connected there. And then my energy of my system has to change. Now, we've already said that this is for a closed mass system. So we're assuming that there's no change in kinetic energy or potential energy. It's not getting higher. It's not, at least negatively so. Um, it's not moving. And so the only thing that can happen here is that its internal energy will change. So as I have heat input, as I have work output, my internal energy of my system will change. And I could then like write out a little bit more where we say we see our work moving boundary work right here. We see the heat and any other work it's having to overcome as well. It's going to be equal to my change in internal energy. Now, for a constant pressure expansion or compression process, we can actually do something nice here. This internal energy and this boundary work that's happening, we can transform this into a new quantity, which is called enthalpy. H is for enthalpy. And this is a term we're going to be using a lot. You're going to see it a whole bunch as we go forward that is simply getting rid of us having to constantly calculate our boundary work because I don't want to have to go do those equations every single time. It'd be nicer if there is an easier way. And that easier way is to be able to calculate the enthalpy. One, because I can find this in tables. Two, because I'll have equations that are much simpler that I can use later, or I just need to know the temperature. And um, it helps us to take away the necessity of always calculating the different types of boundary work for each process. We just have one thing we go to every single time. Okay, we'll stop there next time. I promise this term enthalpy, we're gonna be developing it a lot more in this chapter. Um, but before we can do that, we've got to talk about specific heat. So I'll see you later as we figure that out. Bye-bye.